In this video, we're going to be looking at a very basic example of closures in JavaScript. So I'm on my desktop, I'm just going to quickly create a folder here. I'm just going to call it uh, closure example. And I'm going to go to that folder. And here I'm just going to create a file main.js as always and open the file. Okay, let's talk about closures. In JavaScript, every function creates a closure or you can think of every function as a closure. So let me show you what I mean. So let's say I have a function here. Uh, let's say var my function and that's a function. So you can think of this as a closure. And what that means is that everything that you create inside, uh, inside of this function is scoped to that function. So that's one implication of closure. The other implication is that you will have access to everything in the surrounding. So let me show you what I mean by the surrounding. So if I have a variable here outside, let's say uh, a is one, and here I do uh, console log a, then this closure has access to the uh, surrounding environment. So in this case, a is defined outside of this function, and it will have access to that. So if I run this, if I just call the function, we should be able to see some output. Let me just put this here and run this and you see uh, it, it outputs one. Now if I on line five, if I reset a to two and log this, now a is two because the inner function uh, is reading the value from the outside world. And in this case, uh, a is two. So it will console log. The value of console log is two. Now, when people talk about closures in JavaScript, they really mean a function that returns another function. So let me show you what I mean. Let me get rid of this and let's create a function. And this function is just going to be, let's say, sum. And in here, we're going to return another function. So it gets interesting when you return a function from another function. And this is known as higher order functions, by the way. You get interesting results. So let's say I have a variable here, a equals 0. And in here, I'm going to do something with a variable inside the inner function. So let's, I don't know, let's uh, add something to it. Let's uh, add 1 to it. Now, the interesting thing is, because the inner function is inside the outer function, it has obviously access to the environment variable, which is this. And it's also using that variable, which means that the compiler is going to keep that variable for you even after the outer function is finished executing. So let me show you what I mean. So first, let's call the sum function so we can get a, the inner function out of it. So I'm going to say add is the result of calling sum. So when you call sum, it's going to return a function. And then we can work with that function. So if I just do add and call that function, uh, I should be able to get some value out. So let me just return uh, a. Or I could just leave it this way. Uh, it, it, it's just fine. So if I do that, well, nothing happens. But it's actually incrementing the value. And if I call it again, it's going to increment the same value that it, it, it knows what the value was. So we can log these values. Let me see what happens if we return this value and console log these. So let me just grab these quickly. And let's see if we get any output. So as you can see, it goes from 1 to 2. And if I call it again, it will be 3. So this is an interesting, um, interesting, um, uh, uh, I guess, feature or interesting characteristic of uh, functions that return another function or uh, closures in JavaScript. 